Hi, this is Tommy Stevens with K2 Enterprises, and welcome to another in a series of technology tips. In this tip, we are going to focus on Excel's Power Query feature and how you can utilize this fantastic tool to automate your reports. I hope you're looking forward to learning a little bit about Power Query. I think once you uh, begin working with Power Query, exploring Power Query, and seeing all that Power Query can do for you, you will come to the same conclusion that I've come to, and that Power Query is a fantastic tool that can uh, greatly streamline many of the processes that we find ourselves uh, working through inside Excel each and every day. As we get started, let's uh, pay just a few minutes of attention to what Power Query is, just in case you don't have a good uh, background with Power Query. A quick overview is probably in order, and we'll begin that overview by making sure that everyone is available, that Power Query first became uh, available for Excel as an add-in, dating all the way back to the 2010 release of Excel. Now, if you are in 2010 still or in 2013, you can still go out and download that dad add-in from the Microsoft website, though I will let you know that the newer versions of Power Query, i.e. Excel 2016, 2019, and certainly through Office 365, have substantially more functionality than the prior versions of Power Query. Good news here is that Power Query became, as I like to say, fully baked into Excel beginning with the Excel 2016 release and carrying forward. And what that means is it is no longer an add-in. It is part of the application. You will find it, as you'll see momentarily when we get into demo mode, on the Data tab of the ribbon. Uh, and as I said, no need to go out now and download any kind of add-in to utilize Power Query. Now, why are we going to utilize Power Query? Well, there could be additional uses other than the ones that I'm describing, but I think for most business professionals, Power Query's two primary uses will center around, number one, the idea that we need to link data from external data sources, and number two, the idea that we can utilize Power Query to transform the data uh, that we have linked in so that it's more useful and very importantly here, as you build these transformations, these transformations are persistent. Now let's amplify both of those points for a moment. As far as linking data is concerned, Power Query really does streamline the process and makes it easier for the non-technical user to link data in, even from very sophisticated databases, including SQL Server and many others. The bottom line here is I want you to think there's no longer a need to export data to an Excel file and then copy and paste that data or, or manually repeat whatever processes you happen to be uh, currently undergoing in order to get your hands on the data. Power Query does give us that opportunity, as you will see, of linking the data in. And if we can get that link built one time, get it right just one time and one time only, then from that point forward, we find ourselves merely needing to refresh our reports. Now, as you're linking that data in, it could be very possible that the data is, shall we say, a little bit misarranged or it's not optimized for your needs. Perhaps there's a column of data that you are linking in that contains a, a mass of information and you would like to see that broken into multiple columns. Or likewise, perhaps you have multiple columns that you would like to see combined as one column. Using Power Query, you can create what are called transformations such that you can manipulate and arrange and, and, and edit and even filter that data to get it down to just the precise data you need shaped the way you need it. And importantly, these transformations are persistent. Once you get them built, then as you refresh your queries each and every day, each and every week, each and every month, you will find that those, those transformations are automatically applied each time you refresh your data. So it's a fantastic tool. Again, fully baked into Excel 2016 and newer. That's a good thing. We are going to show you momentarily one particular way, out of many, that you could utilize Power Query to automate reports. And let's kind of set the stage for the demo here. Let's assume, for example, that you need to create a report that contains data from multiple files. These could be Excel files, these could be text files, etc. And maybe the reporting procedure is such that you get a, let's say, a text file, for example, every month from someone else on your team or even a third party, and you need to take the data from that text file, build your report in Excel, and then also next month when new data becomes available, you're going to need to take next month's data and append it 
to last month's data and frankly all prior data and continually refresh report reports on a monthly basis. Now you could substitute obviously weekly or, or even daily uh, for the term monthly here. The idea is you've got a periodic update to your report and the data is going to be coming from somewhere else. If you find yourself in a situation like that, this is a fantastic opportunity to utilize Power Query to help solve uh, and solve the problem of updating the report. This will automate this reporting process for you if you know just a little bit about pivot tables and just a little bit about Power Query. You don't have to really be a heavy-duty expert in either one of those features in order to make this process really easy. So with that said, let's jump into Power Query and see exactly how we could automate that type of reporting process. Now, I am working out of an Office 365 implementation. Again, that's neither here nor there because Power Query is, as I said earlier, fully baked into all versions of Excel dated 2016 or newer. As I mentioned, you will find Power Query on the Data tab of the ribbon. So when I click on the Data tab of the ribbon in the upper right-hand corner, all of this functionality under uh, that the, uh, resides in this Get and Transform Data section. That is the Power Query functionality. Now what I need to do in this example is go and get some data, link some data in. So I will choose Get Data, and I will choose that I want to bring the data in from a file. But I don't really want to bring it in from one file. I want to bring it in from a folder. And when I choose folder, this gives me the opportunity of linking all of the data that's in that folder. Even if that data happens to be in different files, I will be able to link that data into my Power Query based uh, data model or report. So I'm going to choose to bring that data, that data in from a folder. And now Power Query is looking and identifying all of the folders that I have available to me. Let's browse. And I want to bring the data from this Power Query data folder. I will just go ahead and let you know there are actually three separate text files in that folder. And so what Power Query is effectively going to do is link all three of those files into this workbook. And you actually can see those three files there. Notice the file names 2019, 1, 2, and 3. And let's assume for the sake of argument that those represent January, February, and March data. Now it's important to understand that the files do need to be symmetrical in nature. That is the same number of columns, the same column headers, uh, uh, don't necessarily have to have the same number of rows, but they do have to have the same structure in terms of the number of column headers and, and, the, um, uh, and the number of columns and, and the column headers, I should say. Now what I'm going to do is down at the bottom of this Power Query dialog box, I'm going to say that I want to either combine and edit the query, combine and load, or combine and load to. I'll actually choose the Combine and Load 2 option, although I could just say Combine and Load in this case. Combine and Load 2 gives me more flexibility in terms of what happens with this data once I link it in. You see that I'm getting a preview of what the data looks like, just giving me an opportunity to confirm that yes, indeed, that's the data that I was looking for. That's from the first file, and of course I could go and pick specific files again just to make sure I'm getting uh, what I was looking for. In this case, since that is correct, I will just go ahead and click the OK button in the lower right-hand corner. Power Query is going and performing its magic right now. And as it's doing that, it's bringing back the import data dialog box to me, asking me, how do I want this data to come into Excel? Now, I could bring it into Excel's data model if I wanted to and begin to create uh, various uh, other types of reports perhaps off of it. I could take it in and say, I just want to build the data connection right now. I could take it into a table in Excel and then build my report off the table. But knowing in this example that I ultimately want to build a pivot table from this data, I would just choose pivot table report and click OK. So this is now going out, Power Query is now going out, linking in all of that data, and now providing that data to me uh, such that I can build a pivot table from that data. Over here in the far right-hand side of my window in the pivot table field list, I'm going to say that I want to pull the account name into my report. That's the general ledger account name. I want to pull the amount into my report, and I want to pull the date into my report. 
Now I'm going to right click on any of these dates very quickly here and say that I want to group that information together at the, I'm sorry, at the monthly level. And so now I have a monthly report of total expenses by general ledger account and I'll add just a touch of formatting here by right clicking and choosing number format. Let's put that in the accounting format with two decimal places but no currency symbol. So very quickly here, let's retrace our keystrokes before we sh really show the magic of Power Query. We have used Power Query to link the three files, these three text files, from this one folder entitled, in this case, Power Query Data Folder. We've linked that data into our report or link that data into Excel uh, to be a little bit more technically correct about that. And then once we did that, we built a pivot table off of the combined data set. Now momentarily, we are going to take the April data in this text file and we are going to drag and drop the April data into that same Power Query data folder. And what you will see is that our report instantly updates upon us clicking refresh. So as you can see, I've gone back to the uh, Excel workbook. You can see we only have January, February, and March data available. Now let's just kind of drag that down. Let's take, uh, drag that window down. Let's now take the April data. Maybe it just became available to us. Let's drag and drop that into the Power Query data folder. And now let's maximize this window again. Now see that the April data is not yet in my report, but that is only because I have not uh, refreshed the data right-clicking anywhere on the pivot table, clicking refresh, allowing it to update, and boom, I've got my April data. See that I did not have to go out and rebuild that report. I didn't have to make any modifications to formulas or anything of that nature. I was able simply to drag and drop next month's data into the same folder that we had utilized Power Query to pull the original data set into our pivot table. And the moment we refresh the pivot table, we get all of the data in the report. What an amazing transformation. What an amazing way of linking data in. And what a fantastic opportunity that we have in front of us to automate many of our reporting processes. As you can see in this very short demonstration, Power Query certainly provides us with many opportunities to revolutionize how we build our reports, how we update our reports, how we work, quite frankly, uh, in Excel, particularly when we're dealing with data from external data sources. Far from an exhaustive discussion of everything that Power Query can do, that would take many, many hours. I hope that what we've been able to do in this session is give you just a real good idea, uh, hopefully, uh, for, for how you can utilize Power Query uh, to become much more efficient, perhaps with some of the, your reporting processes, and maybe even more importantly, piqued your interest to explore how Power Query can help you solve other problems. I thank you for stopping by. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, we all appreciate you stopping by and taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for this tip. We hope to serve you again in the very near future. Always stop by our YouTube channel or go to our website, k2e.com, and uh, hopefully you'll find those to be great resources for you. Once again, thanks so much. Have a great day.